Money management is definitely something of a science that we like to make sure we get right on this channel. And with that, how do you know which are the best bank accounts, credit cards, and some of the options even for saving for your children out there? It can change every single month. And that's why I asked Andy from Andy Clever Cash, his YouTube channel and podcast here in the UK, if he would come on our channel and give us his best advice. So without further ado, here's Andy to introduce himself. Hey Jen and the Mama Fur Fur audience, it is great to be here on your channel. Thank you so much for having me. Really happy to answer your questions on the kind of things that I cover so much, both on my YouTube channel, Andy Clever Cash, and on the blog, BeCleverWithYourCash.com. I write loads about all sorts of personal finance topics, but banking, savings, credit cards, these are the things that I really, really enjoy getting my teeth into. Thanks, Andy. And as I said, I am absolutely honoured to have you here on the channel. My hope is you can help us pick the best accounts and the best ways to manage our money physically so that we've got it in the best locations for some of the things that we want to do. That being said, let's kick off with your most commonly asked questions. So question number one, what would you consider to be the best UK current account right now? So this is actually quite a difficult question because what makes the best current account really depends on what you need from the bank. Now that could be quite simply, like if you have an overdraft and you are paying money on that overdraft, then the best bank for you undoubtedly is the Nationwide Flex Direct account. As long as you've not had this account before, you can get a 0% overdraft for 12 months. And it could be a relatively sizable sum as well. And that will help you clear that debt. So that was going to save you a huge amount of cash. And it is really, really important to help you, you know, clear that debt. If you don't have an overdraft, then maybe you are thinking about what freebies you can get. And yes, there are loads of switching offers, which are worth looking at. But there are some which give you some passive rewards month after month. The top ones there, possibly Santander's 123 Lite, which gives cash back on household bills. Or there's the Halifax Reward, which can give you £5 a month. Or when cinemas reopen, you can get two cinema tickets every single month. Now, there are some hoops that you have to jump through to get those. But as long as you do that, and they're not too strenuous, not too difficult, that's money that you are getting month after month after month. And of course, you can have a combination of these different accounts as well to kind of stack all those different offers. But if you're thinking about the best banking experience, and if you're not worried about having a branch near you, then I would absolutely take a look at two of the digital challenger banks, Starling and Monzo in particular. They both are quite different. So maybe it's worth getting hold of both the accounts and seeing, trying them out for a week or so, seeing which one you prefer. But they have so many extra features to help you with that everyday banking from tracking your spending to help you kind of put money into savings through to like nice little features just to help you, you know, other banks are copying them now, but freezing your card, checking your PIN, transfer, really, really easy to transfer money across. Those two are absolutely where banking is right now and the other banks are all trying to catch up. I think that's really interesting. We actually as a family have the Halifax one that you mentioned there, Andy, and we also use Starling Bank for our business. And I really enjoy the Starling Bank in particular. It's got those saving pots that I can create so we can put our tax away, we can put you know, our national insurance contributions, all separate different amounts from what I see in the main account. So definitely the digital banks are leading the way with some features that I know are really important and really smart when actually managing your money. And that leads me on to question two, which is the best savings account if we're wanting to put money back for immediate access for something like a new opportunities fund, some people call it an emergency fund, just a larger amount of money outside of investments, where's the best place to put it right now based on interest rates and also some features? Yeah, it's so vital that you have some savings available to you in an easy access account, something you can grab at any time if an emergency comes along. Now, how much you have in those, I know Jenna's covered this quite a lot. Ideally, you're talking about three to six months of expenses. Ideally, that's what you want. You might want more than that on the base on what's gone on the last year. But you've also got to remember if there are certain things you're saving up for. Could be a holiday, could be a wedding, could be a car, maybe a new phone, whatever it is. Then you also want to have that somewhere available to you and not locked away. Where you put it, rates change all the time. But right now, a few places you might want to look for those first amounts of cash. The Virgin Money M Plus current account, that gives you 2.02% on the first £1,000 that you have saved there, which is pretty good. The Club Lloyds current account has a regular saver. As long as you've got that current account, you can also get this monthly account. You can put £400 away every month and get 1.5% on that. Again, these rates can change and probably will change at some point soon. But they're obviously top places right now for that initial sum. But something else you might want to consider if you just want to put everything in one place and not have to worry about splitting it over different places is maybe premium bonds. 
Now, premium bonds, uh, no guarantee you'll get any money with these at all. And the rate that you get, well, it really depends how much you've got in them. The general rule of thumb right now is around £5,000 or above, then you're likely to get more in prizes than you would get in interest at other accounts. Could be worth giving that a go. And particularly, I think, with rates being so poor right now, you're not missing out on a huge amount of cash by perhaps risking not winning anything, but potentially winning something. Although don't hold your breath on getting one of those one million pound prizes. I totally agree with Andy there. I think some rates can change very quickly, almost month to month. And some of these top end interest accounts, we know it's going to be small right now because so many banks, they're keeping their interest rates low because they want to encourage us to spend again in the economy, which makes total sense. And I think it's a balance between having the access you want to your money, especially for these emergency amounts, new opportunity amounts, where you want access to it at that same day potentially so some great suggestions if you're willing also to meet the criteria to get those higher interest amounts i also like the idea of premium bonds there it's something i don't actually have myself but again you have to make sure it's something that you're okay with potentially not getting as much interest if you had it in a bank account and it's definitely long term for those larger amounts as well but there's a lottery there that you could win some money so you never know having those premium bonds could mean you're a premium bond millionaire your way to get that millionaire status very quickly next question is all to do with specialized accounts so this is very important people who are wanting maybe ethical certain situations for their money to be actually housed in to be looked after and even if it's faith-based as well such as halal requirements what are the best bank accounts when we're looking for very particular faith or ethical based requirements i think it's really important that you do think about what your money is doing when it's in a bank account or a savings account because a lot of people aren't quite aware that you put it in there you think it's just sitting there it doesn't just sit in the vault or whatever it is the bank is using that money and it is investing it elsewhere. And a lot of the time they are using that for things that you potentially might not personally agree with. They might be investing in the arms trade. Seriously, they might be funding, lending money to people who are manufacturing arms. They might be putting it into fossil fuels uh, and oil pipelines and all this kind of stuff. Again, if you are worried about the climate crisis, do you really want your money funding things which are making it worse? So it is definitely worth thinking about what the policies are the ethical policies are for all these different banks now the most ethical one of them all is one called triados now you are going to get the best interest rates on your savings there and in fact you're going to have to pay a three pound fee every single month to have your current account there but you know that the money is saved there is going proactively towards good causes yeah and that's probably one of the best ones out there the next level down is perhaps to look at ones who have a few policies in place. Building societies, including Nationwide, but all the building societies, they're generally seen as quite ethical as well because they don't they have to lend a certain amount of their money to mortgages, which means they don't have much money left over to fund any of those other practices. And generally, because they're also mutuals and run by the members, they don't put money into those other places. So they're well worth considering as well. But you could also look at what's called Sharia compliant bank accounts. Uh, there are all sorts of different providers out there. And these basically are Islamic banks where they are kind of uh, adhere to different faith based principles within it. So it would be perhaps that they don't fund anything to do with alcohol uh, and things like that. Again, they aren't going to be perfect. That's one of the struggles you get with this. They still could be investing in things that you don't agree with. But there is at least a line where you know there's certain things that they won't be doing. I think it's super important to have these conversations when we have particular beliefs or structures that we want to honour with our money. It's also important that we're doing it in our everyday saving and we have those options and equally we shouldn't be charged a premium to do that so i have no doubt there'll be a lot more accounts a lot more products on offer in the financial markets pensions we've got investment ISAs, we have these different vehicles that if you've got certain requirements for your money in particular you can meet them just the same as anyone else fourth question we're thinking about children's savings or the young ones around us what are some of the best options if we want to plan ahead for our little ones right now Savings accounts for kids are a lovely idea, a great idea. Not only can it help them engage with that concept of money, but it also helps them think about saving for the future rather than just spending it right now. Now, there are a few different options you might want to consider. What's great about all of them is the interest rates are generally better, or at least there are interest rates that are better than what we get for our adults' accounts. But you obviously need to shop around for these. At the moment, some of the best ones, just general savings accounts, there's the Santander 123 Mini, which gives up to 3% 
on up to £2,000. There's the HSBC My Savings account, which gives 2.5% on up to £3,000. There are regular savers, again, those monthly savers, which are a great place to, to put the money every single month. They're taking action to save money, whether it's their money or your money that you're putting aside for them. The Halifax Kids Monthly Saver is probably the best one, 3.5%. You can put up to £100 a month in there. Or you could consider a Junior ISA. Now, Junior ISAs, there's an annual limit here of £9,000. So a lot less than what you get for the rest of the ISAs, the normal ISAs out there. But you can put that nine grand in there for them. They can get right now the best one, 2.95% with Coventry Building Society. But you've got to remember though, particularly with the Junior ISA, that money is theirs and they can get it when they turn 18. So it's in there for the much longer term. The other accounts, you can get it out and spend it and help them think about actually that spend, save to spend uh, in the more short term as well. I do think it's so important when we've got children or those that are dependent on us, we're thinking about their money in future. We know if we start sooner, things can really go quick. You can have pensions, you can have investment ISAs, junior ISAs for them as well. So it's really important to start those small amounts of money and they could end up being when they're 18, it could pay for their car, even a home deposit, little amounts, long term, we know the magic that can happen. Next question is something I've always wanted to know, could this be done in the UK? We see a lot of US money gurus and blogs talk about using credit cards for points or upgrades. Are there any UK based equivalents where we could actually take benefits in this way? And it could be something that actually brings us a little bit of money cash back as well as additional benefits. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of cash back and reward credit cards. I would say 99 times out of 100 when I make a purchase when I buy something, it is using one of those cards and I'm earning money for my spending, the spending that I'm gonna do anyway. And that's one of the really important rules here though, with a cashback or reward credit card, is only using them for things that you were gonna buy in the first place. If you think by having a credit card, you'll get tempted to spend money you don't have, they are bad news because you can't pay it off and then you get into debt, bad news, right? Avoid them. But if you're confident that you can only buy things that you know you can afford that you need, and if you're also confident that you will clear that balance completely every single month, because if you don't do that, you'll get charged interest, which wipes out any gains you've made from cash back, then they can be really, really useful tools to have. Now, which one you go for? Well, the golden rule here with credit cards is to go via as pre-eligibility checks, often via comparison sites. You go in, you put your details in, often linked to your credit report, there's a soft check, and it tells you your chances of getting accepted for a different card. You want to go for the ones you've got a high chance of getting accepted for. So just because there might be a card out there which offers more points or a higher cashback rate, if you're not going to get it, then don't go for it. But let's say you've got a great credit report, yeah, and you're going to get accepted for all the different cards. I would suggest you want to get an American Express card. That's your priority. That's not accepted in all stores, but most places will take it and you will get the most cash back for all your purchases. Plus, they have some fantastic welcome bonuses. So the two that I would probably look at most of all, the American Express Preferred Rewards Gold Card, that gives you points back, membership points back, which you can transfer into things like gift vouchers, or if you're happy to do a little bit of a dance, convert them from Amex Reward Points into Avios Points and then into Nectar Points, and it gives you a bit of a boost as well, so they're worth even more. Or the American Express Platinum Cashback Credit Card, this one gives you up to 1.25%. It's 1% on the first £10,000 you spend on the cards, which sounds a lot, but if you factor in all your spending during a normal year, supermarket shopping, petrol, anything else you buy, you might not be too far off that. After that, it jumps to 1.25%, so you're earning even more. Both of them also come as long as you've not had an Amex for the last two years in your name with fantastic welcome rewards on top of that, which can be easily worth an extra 100, 150, maybe even more than that in that first year. Watch out for fees though, but there are ways around that. Just do your research. Obviously not everywhere does take American Express. So if you wanna also have a card which is gonna be accepted anywhere, you could look at some of the store cards. So John Lewis, Amazon, Sainsbury's, m and Bank. They all offer ones which give you uh, increased rewards at their stores and the equivalent of about 0.25%, more or less. They give or take depending on the card uh, other places or probably a good all-rounder is the Barclay Card Rewards credit card. This one gives you that 0.25% everywhere, including overseas where there's no charge for your transactions. So it's a good addition to your wallet. 
And my final question for you, Andy, if you had £10,000 arrived to you today, what would you do with it? That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Maybe maybe my premium bonds will, will do that and they'll bring me 10 k at some point this year. I would say that if I had any debts, I would be any commercial debts, I would be put that money towards that. But I don't have any of those credit cards, loans, anything like that. So I don't need to worry about it. But that would be a priority for people who do. If I didn't have an emergency stash of cash available, then I would put it there. But obviously, I've not spent much money over the last year at all. So I'm perfectly sorted there on emergency stash. So really, that kind of puts me in a situation, well, well, what do I do? And it's a little bit of it would be nice to put aside for a bit of a treat, maybe a holiday when we can do that. If not that, maybe it's a festival or going for a meal. There's things that we've not been able to do properly for the last year. So definitely put some of it towards that. But I think the bulk of it, I would be thinking longer term. I would be thinking about, uh, again, either overpaying on my mortgage, which although I've got a pretty decent rate on it, I really love the idea of being mortgage free within the next 10 years would be lovely. Uh, again, moving towards that idea of that financial independence, not having to worry about that all the time. So I think a large chunk of it would probably go maybe as a lump sum towards my mortgage. And the rest of it, I would be putting towards some kind of investment, thinking long, long, long term, uh, making sure that hopefully it's going to bring me even bigger returns. Because as we said before, the rates on savings aren't great right now. So you're going to get a much better return on investments. But I know, Jen, that's something that you would cover a huge amount. And I think I'll be checking out even more of your videos than I already do to make sure I'm putting that money in the right place. Oh, hang on. I'm not actually getting the money, am I? This is an imaginary 10 grand. Well, if I do get that 10K, that's what I'll be doing. I think it is super important, as Andy said, you've got to have balance. I always say personal finance is just that. It's personal. It's not for someone to say you do it in this order. You've got to really feel out what's right. Do you want to pay off debt a little bit or a lot? Do you want to pay into your mortgage? Do you want to invest? Do you want to give? There's kind of lots of good habits. And I think it's important to start the habits you want as soon as possible with your money. I call it my four pillars. So we've got spending well, saving well, investing well, and giving well. Those will build a strong foundation and it's up to you what are the habits and some of the things you focus on as you build that strong foundation. But thank you, Andy, for coming on my channel. I think we've all learned a lot about some of the options out there, definitely. And I know this has been super helpful if you've been asking those questions in my comments. So if you fancy checking out Andy's channel, I'm going to leave it down below that you can go straight to him and why not subscribe and watch a couple of his videos. I think you'll get a lot of value from the knowledge that he shares in particular in the UK. If you've enjoyed this video though, what about checking out this one right here? In the next video I'm going to suggest for you and also you can hit subscribe. You can follow my channel long term and every time I upload a video you'll actually get a notification as well. So thank you so much for watching today. I'll speak to you very soon.